Soundproofing can be completely useless if done incorrectly. In fact, if your parents have a more vivacious love life than you, you'll really want to make sure you do it right the first time. Today, we're going to show you a method that will make a huge difference in the amount of sound you make. I'm Danielle, and welcome to Decor Homes. Hi there, Corey from Decor Homes here. Today, we'll be installing Resilient Channel for a client. Resilient Channel is actually just a metal cavity. You screw this onto the ceiling and this part kind of just hangs there. When you install your drywall, it hangs on this and prevents the sound vibrations from little Timmy and little Johnny upstairs who are stomping around on their heels. It prevents it from actually transferring down and actually cuts the sound down quite a bit. So, Resilient Channel are sold in these giant packs here. They come 12 feet long. It's a very light gauge steel, so you can cut it using your regular old pair of tin snips. It's about a half inch thick. Uh, so it's very basic, it just goes up on your ceiling like this. Originally it was designed to prevent cracks in your ceiling because when wood is installed, sometimes there's moisture, it gets cold, it gets warm, it gets dry. So the house tends to shift quite a bit. And when the house shifts, then you see cracks in your ceiling. That's originally why it was designed. But now it worked so well as a sound isolator that now this is its primary purpose. People are almost forgetting what it was designed for. When we first start installing, the first thing we do is forget the tools, okay? Forget the tools. You need to pick yourself up a measuring tape and you need to start planning. First thing they say is they want you to install no more than six inches away from a wall. We need to start at an exterior wall. This is a bulkhead. I wouldn't want to start here because it's not really connected to the rest of the ceiling. We got this wall over here, but this wall is pretty short. I'm almost thinking start at the center of the house and match this line here. So what I did was I just went three inches. Three inches, I marked it with my pencil, okay? It wasn't graceful, but I'll be able to see it from 10 feet away with my laser. Marked off another line. Marked off with my pencil, that was three inches, okay? I'm... Then I go over here, I grab my DeWalt laser. It's got two different lines on it. One goes straight up, okay? And it'll flash if it's not level. And the next one, it's got a sideways line. So if you're installing tile or something, if you're installing a window, like the laser, and like, look at me, the laser is always right. If you're using a level and you're looking at a wall and you're looking at the window and the wall seems crooked and the window seems crooked, the laser is always right. Remember that. So, first thing I'm doing is I'm trying to set up my laser. I click one button to go vertical and then I just try to hit my line. So what I do is I do slight, slight turns so we got both of our lines pretty well lasered on the wall. To fasten our resilient channel, we use one and a quarter inch screws. I like to use the coarse screws one fastening into wood because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, they're, they really grip into the wood. So you take a couple of screws. And what do I always say? Job is easier with two people, but possible with one. So let's position this. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to look good. I'd say that's pretty decent. Put one screw in. Okay. So, the point of the resilient channel is that there's only one point of contact per stud. With every one point of contact, it reduces quite a bit and this part kind of hangs so it really reduces your sound emission right going through the ceilings here it's on point no the overhang should be no more than six inches if you see an overhang use your tin snips and cut it off. As usual, when you're cutting metal, guys and girls, bend it back into place, okay? Don't, don't be that guy. The idea is that we're going to want to now create a wooden jig that we can now 
build off of this section. These need to be installed 16 inches on center. So the very middle of this metal piece needs to be 16 inches away from the next one, which is exactly the same distance, all right? Once we create a jig, it'll be a lot easier. The area that you drill into is called the flange. Keep that in mind. We'll be using that terminology from time to time. And uh, I just want to make sure you are aware of what I'm talking about. Now that we got our first line done, we can now work off of this line and we can go 16 inches on center. So that's our next step. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a small jig. So I want to be in the very center of this 16 inches. I'm going to measure the distance from the edge of this board to my flange. I'm seeing 14 and... 916. Oh, let's create a jig. 14 and 916s. What do we got here? 14, 916s right here. So I'll go grab my circular saw. Because this is going to be a, a jig that we're using, we want to be fairly precise. Okay, so make sure you cut a nice straight line. If you have a circular saw, you can use that too. Right there. Straight on three, one, two, three. Okay, quick note when I'm using my circular saw, I always use a square when I want to cut a nice straight line. Okay, the second tip when you hold your speed square like this, when you're pushing, it could have a tendency to slide on you. Okay, so always have it arrow down. The bigger speed square is nice when using a circular saw because you could actually put your thumb inside the slot. It doesn't slide like it does the other way. Let's see if we got my 16 inches on center. Put this jig right inside the flange. This goes right up against. Okay, and then we just need to see if all this is... I've got my metric tape. So we just need to see that this is 16 inches on center. And if it is, we'll cut ourselves a second one and we're good. Yeah, that's pretty good to me. You got right in the center of this, and there's your 16 right in the center of what you'll be fastening your drywall to. 14 and 9 sixteenths. Look at that. That's with a circular saw. That is pretty doggone accurate. My recommendation is if you're cutting jigs like this, use a miter saw, a big miter saw, and cut the two boards at the same time. That way, your pieces are exactly, exactly, exactly the same, without a doubt. Or you can do it this way, just make sure your cuts are accurate. I'm keeping this piece, this piece here, so I'm making sure that my blade is on the left side. Right, let's see what we got. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we have our two jigs. I can stand on one side. And typically this is a two person job. If you want, you could just take your jig and you can mark off your ceiling and go one at a time. And then just place it up on the ceiling. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be fastened 16 inches on center. And when you put your drywall up, it's gotta work. So that's one scary part is that you could put up the entire ceiling and then realize that you weren't perfectly straight or your jigs weren't perfect. Then you realize that your, your drywall is not actually going up properly. What professional drywallers tend to do is they put up the resilient channel as they go. This is one way of doing it. I like to just do it correctly the first time and then just get her done. We taught you how to splice it, so you just cut it with a tin snip. You put an extra, an additional screw in there and you should be in good shape. So you have one there and one here. Technically, it probably would have been better if I would have overlapped more, but you know what? This is the first piece we put on and we could just do better as we go. It's not unacceptable, but it does hang down a little bit as you can see, you know, uh, but that's the whole purpose of it is for it to hang down and then you don't have it creating any issues down the road. We'll get our jigs, get our second piece in there. So here's a good tip, okay? Whenever you're installing anything that needs a little bit of a gap, always push all the way to the end and then you can see yourself pull it a half inch from your own end, okay? So that's, that's all I'm doing. Danielle was saying, oh, well, I already had it there, but I wanted to be sure that I felt the end so that I could just pull it back a hair because sometimes what you feel and what is are two different things. So uh, we're hitting a scenario where we need to be no more than six inches away from the wall, okay? And this scenario is showing us that that's greater than six inches. To so we're looking at like eight inches away from this wall. See that? We need to be at six inches minimum. So we're gonna have to add one more. Can I 
to show you something real quick about this resilient channel. This resilient channel is only touching these studs, okay? They're not touching these studs. It's always one point of contact, all right? We're, we're wanting to avoid these walls with all these cross braces over here. The idea is that it, want, it needs to be touching as little as possible so that the drywall hangs on this. So that when people are jumping and hitting the, the base of the floor, it's vibrating the wood, but this doesn't make a noise. So this um, uh, resilient channel coupled with this sound attenuating insulation creates a nice combo and it really helps to eliminate the upstairs sound and you can kind of make a little bit more noise if you want and not really bother everyone. So we're gonna add one more six inch piece here because as you can see, we're failing to meet the required spacing. But the difference is now though, we're switching our rotation. If you can look here, Danielle, we're going, the flange is on the outside of the wall, right? Now the flange is gonna be on the inside. And instead of us going on this two by four section, we're gonna slide it over. So instead of us going under this two by four, we're gonna slide it over so that it's only touching one point of contact, okay? That's the whole point of this. We're trying to have as little touching the ceiling as possible, and the drywall is actually suspended off of this, isolating the sound from upstairs. Let's get right back to it. When I'm cutting my resilient channel, I always start cutting on the flange side, okay? The flange side over here is where the holes are for the for the screws, okay? When you cut through the flange side, it makes it a heck of a lot easier. You cut your first straight edge, boom. Second straight edge, boom. And then you just work your way across. And then the last one, you flip it around and you give it a straight cut. Okay? From there, you bend it all back into place as if was brand new. This is a soft metal, okay? So you, you can cut into it without making any noise, no grinder. I mean, just simple tin snips, okay? If you want less work, always make sure that the part that you're keeping is on the right side and the part that you're discarding is on the left. So this was the part that I cut versus the angle that I discarded. Do you see how this is all bent out of shape? So if I always used the left side instead of the right side, then instead of having an angle like this, I'd have to re-bend all of my tips. Just something to bear in mind when you're doing your cuts. For this particular area, I need a 36 inch piece, but I need like seven of them. So I just cut one, or this one is my template. And then I just use it to make a couple quick ones. That way I don't have to bust out my measuring tape every two seconds. So one thing that's really critical is you always want to get your long pieces done first. The longest pieces are always the most important ones because when you need a full length piece, if you're cutting all of your small pieces from full length pieces, then you won't have enough to finish your long lengths. So we have all of these like 40 inch pieces are perfect for the seven or eight 36 inches that we need. Always be very careful because these things are sharp. Ooh, see I started cutting from the wrong side there, but I always wanna start cutting at the flange. So now I'm gonna have to re-bend this thing into place. Now it's okay to make mistakes. You try your best, but you don't wanna be repeating your mistakes. Well, if you're still here, you might as well watch more videos, like this one. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.